Oh, let's take a listen. People will say that the Catholic Church moved the Sabbath. Did they? That's not true. That's actually a misunderstanding of what actually happened. Catholics, the Church did not move the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. In fact, the Sabbath is not something that is celebrated liturgically by Catholics. Really? It has been replaced by the Lord's Day of Sunday in the New Covenant. And isn't it interesting wow. that replaced by his resurrection? Saturday... Yeah. Is a day of rest. Right. If we follow strictly, and this is what Seventh Day Adventists, there, that, yeah, oh, this, those, those Seventh Day Adventists, oh, at least they're getting your attention. Is a day of rest. Right. If we follow strictly, and this is what Seventh Day Adventists, there, that, yeah, this is what they they focus on, and and they they recognize the Sabbath. However, when we think about it, what happened? Jesus died on what day? Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Right. Good Friday. And then they had to take him down from the cross and do all of that work. Why? Because the Sabbath, like they couldn't work. They couldn't do that type of a thing. Mm -hmm. So they had to rest on the Sabbath. Because of the significance of the day. But we know that Jesus didn't rise on the Sabbath. He rose on the third day. Yeah. You missed the point. God created the world in six days, rested on which day? Seventh day. Jesus died on Friday. I agree with you. But he rested on which day? On the Sabbath. Guess what? Creation and also redemption. Parallels. If you are really paying attention, you will understand the significance of the day has a lot more to do with the resting of the Lord on that day. <laughs> so actually, by, G by God resting on the seventh day of the week, then the Sabbath became holy. He also rested in the tomb on the seventh day of the week. So if you want to be consistent, you will also agree that brings even more significance to the Sabbath because Jesus rested on it even in the grave. But again, that's, that's probably overlooked. So what would that third day have been? You could still observe the Sabbath. Doesn't make the third day holy because Jesus rose on it. Jesus did a lot of great things on different days of the week. He was born on a particular day of the week. Jesus died on Friday. Jesus also walked in Jerusalem on a, I mean, surely he rode in Jerusalem on a donkey on a particular day of the week. I don't necessarily know, but that doesn't necessarily mean the day now becomes holy and sacred. It becomes, it became the new Sabbath. What kind of theology is this? Sabbath, but... Catholics are not commanded to worship on the Sabbath. Yeah. If you want to observe the Sabbath with rest... Say that again? Catholics are not commanded to worship on the Sabbath. Yeah. If you want to observe the Sabbath with rest, that's okay. And, and I, I think, think that's, that's important to the spiritual life. So if the Catholics are not commanded to worship on the Sabbath, that means the Catholics are getting commandments from something, someone else, because God is very clear. We are to worship on the Sabbath. So who is giving? Who is the authority that is telling the Catholic Church and the Catholic people who they are to listen to? Traditions of men, tradition of the church, or the commandments of God. Yeah, and Pope Benedict said, look, observing that rest on the Sabbath is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But Catholics aren't commanded to that. They weird. That is a weird theology. All right, let's keep listening. That rest on the Sabbath is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But Catholics aren't commanded to that. They are commanded to worship on the Lord's Day. And what I love about this, uh -huh. to worship on the Lord's Day, we call it liturgy, which means work. Okay. So it's distinctly different That's than right. Sabbath. <laughs> That's a great yeah. point. Good. And wow. when you think of the third day, right, Jesus rises, our work is beginning, mm -hmm. and the work is materializing effectively, and the work is salvific in nature, sanctifying us, sanctifying our will, so that we may enter into greater intimacy and union with the Father. And it, totally miss, it totally misses the point of keeping a day holy and what significance actually means. I mean, you can work on any day of the week. I mean, working in the service of the Lord is somewhat different than just secular uh, labor than what we as Seventh Day Adventists we actually understand. We rest from our labor. It doesn't necessarily mean we don't do anything. We are actively engaged in ministry on the Sabbath. That doesn't necessarily mean you're violating the Sabbath because it's you 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 doing something outside of yourself to help your neighbor, loving your neighbor as yourself. That is somewhat different. That's part of keeping the day holy in and of itself. So it's not the same point as working. This is the same. This is a similar argument to what. The, the, the Pharisees were making against Jesus, and as Jesus was doing the Lord's work. He said, my father works, therefore I work. But he was working in the sense of saving, helping, salvific type of labor. It's not considered the type of work that is not supposed to be done on the Sabbath day. So this is a major misconception. And with our neighbor to exercise that greater harmony as a foretaste of the kingdom of heaven, which is at our fingertips. You can do all that on the Sabbath of the Lord. <laughs> What's the point of doing it on a Sunday? On a day that you already admitted was not the original Sabbath. So go back and do it on God's holy day then. 
It's right here among us. The kingdom is among us. How? It's because Jesus is among us and Jesus is within us and with us. So realizing these mysteries and how important it is to live these mysteries in the practice of our Catholic faith, our worship must be oriented on a day of work. And that is the third day, which also can be referred to as the eighth day. Yeah, the eighth day. And that's what the early... I heard people saying that, but there's no such thing as an eighth day. There's only seventh day of the week, but let's leave that alone. The church, we call it as the eighth day, the new creation, the new covenant. And you'll see this in scripture. So people who say, you know, who are, who will say, well, the church moved the Sabbath or whatever, we should be working on Saturday. The early church was very clear that they had abrogated the Sabbath requirements and had now shifted their worship and their liturgy their work to the new day. So you see it in 1 Corinthians. Well, before before you get there, by the way, I want to quickly address this idea that the Lord's Day is on uh, is on Sunday. This is coming from uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10 said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's Day. This is, the, this is the verse that the Catholic Church has based an entire theology, an entire theology from on this single verse. And it's not even the entire verse. It's just, anyway, John the Revelator said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So this little part right here, they're all connecting it to Sunday. But how in the world could you do that? This is not proper exegesis. That's exegesis. That's not proper hermeneutics. That's misconception and reading your opinion into the text. All right, listen, my Roman Catholic friends, you got to stop doing this. This is not proper exegesis. All right, this is not proper hermeneutics. This is not how you break down the scripture comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This is wrong. You can't take a verse and build an entire teaching on that. This is wrong. As a matter of fact, this verse has nothing to do with Sunday at all. So if you want to be fair to the scripture and be consistent with the rest of the Bible, you will actually compare this particular passage to the rest of the Bible. And what you're going to begin to realize very quickly that this passage is not talking about Sunday at all. As a matter of fact, if anything, Jesus tells us that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath day. So the Lord's day is the Sabbath day. So let's go to Isaiah also 58. That also is abundantly clear. So this conception that Sunday is the Lord's day because John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You're not reading your Bible correctly, man. Like read the rest of the Bible. And it, look at what it says here in Isaiah 58. It says, it says here, if you turn away your food from the Sabbath from doing thine own pleasure on what day? My holy day. The Sabbath is my holy day, the holy of the Lord. It is the Sabbath. And if you go to the Ten Commandments itself in Exodus chapter 20, God spells it out again. He doesn't want you to miss it. Verses 8, and it reads, and it reads, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Like, what else do you, I mean, guys, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> anyway, um, goodness, this is, not, this is not good theology at all. But anyway, let's keep listening. 16 on the first day of each work to the new day. So you see it in 1 Corinthians 16. On the first day of each week, you should set aside and save whatever one can afford so that the collections will not be going on when I come. Uh, that doesn't make the day holy, fella. <laughs> what was going on here was there were persecutions happening uh, among the early church, and some of the early Christians were being persecuted. Paul was in a rush. Right. So he wanted them to put aside a collection for these Christians that were being persecuted in Rome. So he he wanted to swing by, grab the money and then so he could travel and so he can donate the money to these Christians who needed the help. That was the only reason why he did it. He wasn't because the day was holy and sacred and becomes the new Sabbath. Like contextually, when you study what the Bible says, it has nothing to do with the holiness of Sunday at all. Anyway, he was just collecting money. How are you going to, you know how desperate you got to be to say, because Paul was collecting money on Sunday, that means Sunday is holy. When the rest of the Bible never says anything about that, there's never been a worship on Sunday. There's never been any commitment saying Sunday is the new Sabbath. Don't you think God would have said that in Hebrews chapter four? If he had commanded another day, don't you, don't you think God, if there was a new day to be kept holy, don't you think God would have told us that? Don't you think God would have said, guys, I need you to keep this new day holy? He never said it. He, said, he says, uh, uh, there it is. There you go. Jesus, if Jesus had given them rest, then will he not afterward have spoken of another day? So if Jesus wanted them to have another day to worship, which is Sunday, don't you think Jesus would have told us that? But we reason the, the writings of the apostles, but the apostles don't contradict the words of Jesus. 
But again, this is so desperate. Anyway, let's keep going. It's sad. Uh, that's that's St. Paul. You can see in uh, Acts 20, on the first day of the week, when we gathered to break bread, Paul spoke, blah, 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 on and on. Are you serious? Like, on the first day of the week when they gathered to break bread? Uh, did you know, I'm going to read another, I'm, I'm going to read another text to you. Did you know, let me read to you. Here is a text for you. They continued, they continued daily on one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness of heart. Uh oh, did you pick that one up? So you say on the first day of the week they were eating bread. Okay, so what? We eat on Sunday. Everybody eats every day of the week. But here, if you wanna if you wanna be consistent with the rest of the scripture, so they were meeting daily, breaking bread. So okay, now let's let, every day now is holy. Every day is holy because the apostles came together and they had potluck. The Christians came together on Sunday. Then they ate food. So now the day is sacred. Like guys, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I mean, I got me and my Christian friends. We meet all the time and we we eat food. Then sometimes we come. They come to our house and we have Bible study. Doesn't make the day sacred. God, this is so bad. But anyway, um, this is the argument that these guys want you to actually see as a substitution of the Sabbath. This is desperation, guys. If you're using these type of texts when people are breaking bread to say that makes the day holy, you're desperate because you know you don't have it. So this is uh, this is presented here before you. And again, we'll recover these scriptures and we'll share them very clearly so that you can have in your Bible. These scriptures are abundantly clear. I think the only person is confused here is the argument. Well, marked. If you open up 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it's evident. Verse 2 on the first day of the week, right? So we're talking about Sunday. Acts of the Apostles. Guys, they're using these few verses, isolated scriptures, to actually build an entire doctrine. Actually, I can give you over a hundred verses about the Sabbath. They can only pull a few New Testament verses that are taken out of context to make the argument. Which one are you going to believe? Where the weight of evidence is? Or are we just a few little <laughs> isolated verses that are not even taken in their proper context? Are you going to believe that? I mean, it's your choice. Apostles, this is important. In the eighth verse of chapter 20, of chapter 20, we hear in the seventh verse, excuse me, on the first day of the week, once again, brothers and sisters, they're gathering to break the bread. This is Eucharist at its core. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not the same thing that the Catholics do. They were just eating food. That's all it was. It wasn't Eucharist. It wasn't, they weren't having communion. Even if they were having communion, doesn't make the day holy. This is so desperate. They're desperate to build a teaching that is not really rooted in scripture. This is how you know you don't have the truth because you have to ice. You have to go so far to explain things into the text that really doesn't fit. You're trying to put you know, a, a, a round peg in a square hole here. Doesn't necessarily make sense. This is St. Paul. This is scripture. So anybody who's challenging what you do as mm -hmm. a Catholic, what you do as a faithful follower of Christ, it's right here in the scriptures. And I'm not one to go out and apologize. Okay, this is so desperate. Anyway, I don't know if I should continue this because it's, it's like they're leaving, they're, leaving, they're, leaving, they're taking scripture out of context. They are jumping from places to another. By the way, we didn't say, nobody says that... Uh, we didn't say the Catholic changed the day. The Catholic themselves admitted they changed the day. Did Constantine do it? There goes your text. It's right there. You see, here, let, me, let me read it to you. Okay, in 321 AD, Constantine de de decreed on a venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest. Let all the workshop be closed. Now, listen to what they say about that. Let's keep listening. Ethically go out and try to evangelize and proselytize and say, hey, you're getting the scriptures wrong and I'm going to I'm going to prove you wrong. But we are we are living the faith in a scriptural and an apostolic way. Right. We're not even close. The apostles never kept Sunday. No, this is a pagan thing that's been handed down to you. That's the honest truth. Doing the same exact thing that was done by the ones whom Jesus instituted these very mysteries and set them into motion through. <laughs> I'm going to read a verse to you that's going to destroy that argument in a minute. Let's keep listening. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an another thing. I, I think they feel good about themselves like they really made an argument. That wasn't an argument. That was just an opinion. I think that's important to talking about why Sunday. This was an interesting thing that I, I read about is that a lot of people say, well, the church didn't even move 
worship to Sunday. This was a command of Constantine. They always blame Constantine for literally everything. Anyone who's a critic of the church, who's a fundamentalist, basically says Constantine is the founder of the Catholic papish religion, right? What? But and the, they'll go back to this edict. You haven't heard that, right? <laughs> no. What kind of people are you I talking about? about? I, guess. I don't know about the founder of the Catholic religion, but it actually gives the church so much power today. There wouldn't be a Catholic church without the influence of Constantine, but we can go into that whole history. I got to take a look at my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, you got to look at your enemies. <laughs> I, you deserve a better class of enemy. Yeah, thank you. But um, they'll. I like their attitude, though, apart from. The failing argument, I think their attitude is great. I could do without all these funny looking statues on the table. <laughs> it's just utterly unnecessary. Anyway, let's keep going. Say that, you know. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um, that Constantine did make an edict in 321. It was the edict, edict of Milan. Yeah. No, the edict of Laodicea, <laughs> oh, okay. which says that it mandate that people were not to work and do stuff on Sunday. So they, oh, cool. they look at that like, oh, that was him saying that now it's Sunday and I'm moving the Sabbath and I'm breaking God's law. No. It was basically like a federal holiday. He was <laughs> in the world. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it wasn't a federal holiday. Who who has federal holidays every 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 seventh day, every day of the week? Every um yeah, I mean how many how many times do you need to celebrate that federal holiday? Have mercy. Federal holiday for what exactly? This is the most dishonest answer I've ever heard in my life. Constantine was passing a religious law. Do you wanna know why he was passing religious law? Because he was a pagan. He wasn't a true Christian. His conversion wasn't even true. Now people believe Constantine was a real Christian. No, he was not. He wasn't an honest Christian. There's been evidence that Constantine kept on worshiping the sun god even after he had claimed to believe in God. This is the fact. You see, at the time of the cult of Mithraism, let me make this a little bit big, bigger for you, or uh, sun worship was the, was the official religion of the Roman Empire. This right here, they won't tell you that one, will they? The reason Constantine did it is because he used to worship the sun. He came into the church with his own pagan ideology. His heart wasn't converted. This is why. And where did he get this, this view from? It stood as the greatest competitor to the new Christian religion. It had his new organization, temples and priesthood and robes and everything. He also had an official worship day on which the homage was to be given to the sun. That day was called the Venerable Day of the Sun. The word Venerable Day here, in, a, in other words, is calling the sun itself something that, to be, that is to be venerated, to be worshipped. So in the words of Constantine, he's telling you, venerable day of the sun. He believed the sun is to be venerated. It, it has to be looked at something to worship. It was written inside of the law. Why did he get this from? He got it from the priest of Rome. That's where they got it from. So these men, I don't know what these men are talking about. If you don't know your history, they can twist you because they're laughing and nice and they all love their attitude and everything. And I'm not attacking characters here. I'm just simply saying the arguments is really bad, fellas. It's really bad. You guys got to do better than that. Roman Empire saying we are now making every Sunday a holiday. It is a federal holiday. So there's a distinction there because, I mean, we have federal holidays in America for all kinds of things. Not the same thing. You know? It's the freaking. This was a religious institution, buddy. This was a religious institution. Uh, 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 born from the heart of Satan himself to substitute God, biblical Sabbath. This was what was going on here. So don't sugarcoat what happened. This was a big move. It was a massive move. You know how big of a thing that was? Let me help you out. If you go, they actually went furthermore to say anybody who did not go along with Sunday keeping, they were called anathemas. You know what that means? A curse, a curse. And they called them Judaizers, arrested on the Sabbath. So they didn't just make a law and keep Sunday and leave everybody else's along based on their own conviction. No, 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 no. They, they not only made a new Sabbath laws, new Sabbath law, but they also made an anti-Sabbath law. So we want you to, we, we're introducing you guys to a new day of worship. We call it the Lord's Day, which is a deception why we did debunk, debunk that. And then when they were done, years down the road, they passed another law saying, if any of you guys are keeping, who are Christians are keeping the Sabbath, According to the way the Jews used to do it, that's why they call it Judaizers. You should be accursed. This wasn't a small statement, by the way. This was a massive statement. When they say for you to be doing this, you should be 
an anatomist from Christ, separated like a curse, a rejecter, a rejected individual. You get it? So this, this was like an anti-Sabbath law that was to ostracize anyone who did not go along with this supposed new Sunday Sabbath, which there's no such sure thing as a Sunday Sabbath, but let's just go with the term. This new Sunday Sabbath wasn't just a law. It was more like, if you guys are keeping Sabbath on Saturday, you out. That's what was going on here. And the people are saying, oh, we Catholic people, we Seventh-day Adventists are saying that the conflict changed the day. Uh, this is Cardinal Gibbons. This is probably the, probably the best individual when it comes to Catholic faith, most respectable person in the Catholic, in the Catholic uh, uh, history. He's way up there as far as respectability is concerned. There are colleges named after this man. Listen to me. He, he says this, and this is, I'm reading here. But you may read from Genesis to Revelation, you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scripture enforced the religion's observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctified. Oh, you don't believe me? Let's read on. One more. Cardinal Gibbons, again, Archbishop of Baltimore, in a signed letter, he's answering this question. The question was asked about the Sabbath. He says, is Saturday the seventh day Sabbath according to the Bible and the Ten Commandments? I answered, yes. Is Sunday the first day of the week? Uh, 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 and did the church change the Sabbath day, to the, the, the seventh day, Saturday to, for Sunday, the first day of the week? I answered, yes. Did Christ change the day? I answer, no. This is Cardinal Gibbons. Like, do these men know what their church actually say and believe? These, these are not some, some group online. This is not Ivan is speaking. This is, this is your leaders saying this. And if I can't believe your leaders, if, I can't, if you can't even admit your leaders said this, everything you said in this video is farce. Red airing, false argument. It's a straw man argument. We just gonna we we just gonna throw that to the trash because we're like we don't respect that because you ain't saying nothing. Look at what it says here, Peter Geisman. Uh, which day is the Sabbath day? Answer: Saturday is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. What else do they need to tell you for you to believe them? One more. Here's the challenge. I have repeatedly offered one thousand dollars to anyone who can prove to me from the bible alone that i am bound to keep sunday holy there is no such law in the bible it is the law of the holy catholic church alone the bible says remember the seventh day to keep it holy the catholic church says no god says keep my sabbath holy but the catholic church takes credit for the change and he says no by my divine power, I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the commands of the Holy Catholic Church. This is why Seventh-day Adventists will not keep Sunday holy. And they cannot keep the Sunday holy because Sunday is not the true Sabbath. It's a lie. It's a deception. It's a counterfeit Sabbath. We say that with boldness, with a smile on our face. You guys are lying. And we know that, and we can see right through you. Now, I know the argument. Oh, what about the, the early apostles? Listen, that, 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 that's old news. First century Christians also worship on the Sabbath. This is old news. By the way, if you, I'm going to leave a link for all my references here. I'm going to give you a link for all my references here so you don't say James said, he said, she said. No, no, no. I'm going to give you the link, and you can go read these articles yourself. Matthew 24, verse 20 says, Jesus prayed that your flight be not on the winter or on the Sabbath day. Did you know what Jesus was making reference to? He was talking about fleeing from the, from the destruction of Jerusalem. Do you know when that happened? In AD 70, under Titus. So now, when this happened, most of the apostles were already dead. So Jesus is looking into the far future and he's telling the Christians, remember, Pray that you don't have to flee on a Sabbath day. If you didn't think they were going to keep, Sabbath, keep, keep keeping Sabbath, if Sabbath was changed to Sunday, what was the point of Jesus saying this? Common sense? Let's look at another thing. Jesus himself kept the Sabbath. The apostles kept the Sabbath. The early church and the Gentiles themselves kept the Sabbath. Lord have mercy. You get it? Even the Gentiles kept the Sabbath. Now, look at this. In Acts 16, verse 13. Look at this. They are worshiping on the Sabbath. This is not said about Sunday. Look. 
both Jews and Greek. So even the Jews and the Gentiles, they understood the significance of the Sabbath in the New Testament. You think these men will be keeping Sunday at this time? Nope. Nope. They were in the synagogue in church. No, no. They weren't just eating bread like you want to make that argument. No, no. It was just bread. This is worship. <laughs> this is worship of the Lord. Why? Because it's happening on a day that God has ordained. These people understood that. But again, I love these men. I think they're nice. I, I can listen to them. They have a, a great attitude. And I can sit down and have a nice discussion with them. But if you think these little arguments you bring in right now and these little verses you're sharing right now is going to change Seventh-day Adventists who know their Bible. I, I want to be specific. Some of us don't know what we believe. But some of who know their Bible and know how to study the Bible, and know how to defend their teachings. Listen, if you're going to come with that, I'm, I'm letting you know there's going to be a serious domino effect. <laughs> we're going to just, we're going gonna, we're gonna to tackle you from the, from the, like, boom, the whole building will come crumbling down. Demolition derby. This will not stand. You're going to have to come with something better. And guess what? There is nothing better anyway, because it's not supported in the scripture. And there is no argument you can present to change the fact that you were worshiping God on a wrong day. And it's okay to be honest with yourself. You want to follow the words of the Pope and the priest and the Catholic Church? And you want to be loyal to their comments? Fine, just say that. But don't use the scripture for that because the scripture doesn't support this argument. And every other Protestant themselves who are listening to this, who are keeping Sunday, you need to make up your mind, buddy. This controversy ain't going away. This stuff is swelling into something bigger. It's going to lead to what the Bible refers to as the mark of the beast. And guess what? You're going to hear it more and more every day. If you're getting tired of hearing it here and there for our channel, I'm here to tell you something. You haven't heard nothing yet. Because the Bible says it's going to restore the, the repairer of the breach. The biblical Sabbath must be restored. And it will be restored in the lives of the people who believe in Jesus. Brace yourself. We're only going to turn off the heat in this channel. Have a good one.